In my last video, I showed off a bit of my first 3D FPS, but some of you noticed there was a small glimpse of a new version of Frog Pursuit. Well, it's here now. For those of you that don't know what that is, I built Frog Pursuit as a complementary tool to other well-known monitor motion tests like testufo.com and even older and lesser known programs like Pixel Performance Analyzer or Pix per An. These tools are fantastic and I still use them all the time, but I needed a tool that could serve a similar function but that worked just as well while using variable refresh rate technologies like G-Sync or FreeSync. If you want a more detailed look at how and why Frog Pursuit came about, I kind of smooshed that explanation smack dab in the middle of my Acer KG271U review, so I'll leave a link to that with a timestamp. But shortly, due to the way NVIDIA implements LFC, or low frame rate compensation, during actual variable refresh rate gameplay, a monitor displaying 60 FPS can perform and look much better than a monitor limited on the desktop to 60 Hz. Frog Pursuit is a UE4 DX11 game, so it can match the same VRR conditions that you'd experience while playing an actual game, and should hopefully give a more true-to-life demonstration of motion blur. With all that in mind, let me introduce the new version of Frog Pursuit, which is now bundled together with some other test scenes, which I'll talk about soon, into something I'm calling Smooth Frog. By default, I have Smooth Frog load into the Frog Pursuit scene, but Smooth Frog is actually a combination of both my Frog Pursuit and Smooth Mouse programs broken up into four test scenes. There's Frog Pursuit, there's Smooth 2D Pan, there's Smooth 3D Rotator, and finally there's Smooth 3D FPS. I showed off a bit of the FPS scene in the last video, but this video is all about Frog Pursuit, so let's stick with that. The 2D settings menu has quite a lot of options that adjust the behavior of Frog Pursuit, but these and more can be done live with hotkeys and shortcuts right inside Frog Pursuit, which I'll get to in a moment. Before we get to that though, ideally we begin by adjusting the video settings. For compatibility reasons, I default Smooth Frog to windowed full screen mode or borderless full screen. For most adaptive sync displays, borderless full screen works just fine, but if necessary, you can select full screen mode to ensure that adaptive sync is working as intended. V-Sync is also turned on by default. Notice that even though the current FPS limit is set to 360 frames per second, because the monitor I'm recording this on is a 165 Hz panel, the current frame rate is bouncing off of that 165 FPS V-Sync limit. If you're using Frog Pursuit for Pursuit Photography, or just in general, it's always a good idea to cap your frame rate to at least one FPS below your monitor's max refresh rate. That'll make sure that you're in the adaptive sync range. In my case, I'm going to set the frame rate limit to 164 FPS. The FPS limit, though, is not limited to integer frame rate caps. If you'd like, you can set a limit out to four decimal places. For instance, I could set the limit to 163.2195, and we can see Unreal's frame rate indicator is rounding that to two decimal places. There are a lot of other video options, like resolution scaling, anti-aliasing, FSR, and FSR even works in Frog Pursuit, which is something I'll touch on later. But these are intended more for the 3D scenes. Full screen mode, V-Sync, and the frame rate cap should be sufficient for Frog Pursuit. But before I get out of this menu, I want to set the FPS limit to 100 FPS, a nice clean 10.0 millisecond frame time, and you'll see why in a moment. To close the menu, you can either hit Escape or Z. Escape works just fine, but Z is a bit closer to WASD, so I prefer that over Escape. Once the menu is closed, we're now presented with the default Frog Pursuit scene. I mentioned earlier that all the settings from the menu and more are available as hotkeys within Frog Pursuit, and the HUD at the bottom of the screen here will be your guide on how to use them. And particularly, the bottom right of the HUD contains a list of all the hotkeys that you'll need. Let's start with the first one on the list, H to toggle the HUD. If you're taking full screen pursuit photographs, the HUD, which is quite large, will obviously get in the way. So pressing the H key will hide the HUD and also hide your mouse cursor. Pressing H again will return the HUD and your mouse cursor. Next on the list is V-Sync. V-Sync can, of course, be enabled and disabled in the video menu, but you can also simply click V to toggle and you'll see the current V-Sync setting displayed on the left-hand side of the HUD. If you're in the Adaptive Sync range, which we are currently, and if you disable V-Sync, you'll probably notice tear lines running across the bottom of the screen. For pursuit photography, make sure you're in the Adaptive Sync range and keep V-Sync on. At the left of the HUD, we can see that the current pattern is Frog Pursuit, but if you want to change that, you can use the A and D keys. 
The pattern can be selected in the 2D settings menu from the drop down list, but if you want to cycle quickly through the patterns, A and D work just fine. New to this version of Frog Pursuit is the ability to put in your own custom patterns. I've got those as user1 and user2. Right now I've got nothing in the directory, so it's only showing a placeholder image, but I'll cover how to add your own patterns soon. Next thing is the pattern direction. I default to having the frogs move from right to left, since that works better for me as a right-handed person taking pursuit shots. But if you'd prefer the pattern to go from left to right, you can swap that behavior by clicking either Q or E. E pans the pattern from left to right, Q swaps back to right to left. Let me skip a few hotkeys and go directly to the pan style hotkey, P. By default, I have the pan style in pixels per frame mode, which you can see at the bottom left of the HUD. Clicking P will swap Frog Pursuit's panning mode to pixels per second, and that change will be indicated on the HUD. The requested speed and resulting average speed will also change to indicate the mode swap. But while we're in pixels per second mode, Taking a look at the resulting average speed in pixels per frame may give you an indication of why I don't recommend using this mode at all. I debated whether or not to even include the pixels per second mode, and I'll cover why shortly, but for almost every user, you should realistically never find yourself using pixels per second mode. And especially for pursuit photography, you must be in pixels per frame mode for valid photos. So let's get back into pixels per frame mode. Next up is the FPS limit slider. This slider serves the exact same function as the one in the video menu. The limit can be adjusted in real time. You can manually type in your desired limit, or you can use the left and right arrow keys to decrement or increment the FPS limit one FPS at a time. Notice though, that as I decrease the frame rate limit, the pattern slows down. And as I increase the FPS limit, the pattern speeds up. Is that supposed to happen? Yes. That brings us to the next slider, panning speed in pixels per frame. Just like the FPS slider, this can be adjusted up and down. You can manually type in a speed, or you can use the mouse wheel up or down to increase or decrease the panning speed by one pixel per frame at a time. But unlike the FPS slider, this value must be an integer. From Unreal's perspective, every frame tick, I'm asking it to move the image one full pixel, or two pixels, or three pixels. Unreal can pan the pattern a non-integer float amount of pixels per frame, that's what's happening in the pixel per second mode, by the way. But the image must then be nearest neighbor scaled, which means that it's not possible to get pixel perfect motion. That's also why I strongly suggest using the pixels per frame mode. Here the panning speed does change depending on the frame rate, but that's necessary to achieve the smoothest possible panning motion. My audience mostly seems to be huge monitor nerds, which I love. And that means most of you are already familiar with testufo.com. And you should be, since it's the de facto pursuit photo solution for essentially every monitor review on the internet. Interestingly, TestUFO's default panning speed is set at 960 pixels per second. Right now, I've got the frog pursuit pattern moving pretty slowly. So let's see if I can match TestUFO's default speed. With the speed slider at one pixel per frame, how fast is my pattern moving? Well, right below the requested speed, I have the HUD also display the resulting average panning speed in pixels per second. And the calculation is really quite simple. Right now, running frame capped at 100 frames per second, if I multiply 100 frames per second by one pixel per frame, the frame units cancel out, and we get the result 100 times 1, or 100 pixels per second. That's obviously too slow for pursuit photos, so let me keep increasing the pixels per frame to try to reach test UFO's default of 960 pixels per second. But as I'm changing the speed here, I suspect many of you have noticed there's going to be a problem getting to 960 pixels per second. At 9 pixels per frame, 9 times 100 is 900 pixels per second. If I go to 10 pixels per frame, 10 times 100 is 1000 pixels per second. How in the world am I going to get 960 pixels per second? The answer is, I can't. Test UFO speeds and frog pursuit speeds have always been approximate due to the necessity of panning the test pattern and integer number of pixels per frame. Test UFO will always select the nearest approximate panning speed to your requested speed based on your monitor's refresh rate. Only at frame rates that are divisors of 960 can you achieve exactly 960 pixels per second. For instance, instead of using 100 FPS, if I drop down to 96 FPS, which evenly divides 960, setting the panning speed to 10 can achieve a 96 times 10 or 960 pixels per second resulting speed. 
This approximate speed has caused a bit of confusion with Acer's new 390Hz monitor, the 25XV2Q, when compared to other 360Hz screens. People noticed that on Test UFO, the pattern seemed to move slower at 390Hz than it did at 360Hz. At 360Hz, the only options near 960 pixels per second are 720 or 1080, which come from 2 pixels per frame or 3 pixels per frame. Test UFO chooses 1080 pixels per second, which is closer to the target of 960. At 390 hertz, the only mathematically possible options are 780 or 1170 pixels per second. Test UFO again goes with the one that's closer to 960, which is 780 pixels per second. So the users weren't wrong. The 390 hertz pattern was panning slower which will definitely change how they look in pursuit photos, giving a large advantage to the 390Hz screen. Unfortunately, it's not possible to show an apples-to-apples -apples comparison between those two refresh rates. Here we have to live with close enough. So, if you do intend to use Frog Pursuit for reviews, or even test UFO pursuit photos, I suggest reporting the calculated panning speed, or at the least, giving the caveat that the speed is approximate. Frog Pursuit's pixels per second mode can match speeds at different frame rates, but because the pattern has moved a non-integer number of pixels per frame, I don't think it can be relied on for valid pursuit shots, but I'll leave that up to advanced users. Next thing we should talk about is the Pursuit Camera Sequence Track, or PCST, which can be toggled on and off with the middle mouse button. Or, alternatively, if you want to access it through the menu, you can click the Toggle PCST button. Note that the Pursuit Track will only work when in the pixels per frame panning mode. If you select the pixels per second mode, the pursuit track ends up being useless, so I just disable the PCST to prevent that from happening in the first place. When you first enable the track, I've set the default location tucked just below the main frog pattern. But if you switch to a different pattern, or you want to use your own custom image, the PCST can be moved anywhere on the screen by holding down the right mouse button and dragging. You can also move it one pixel at a time up or down with W or S. This is useful if you'd like to take pursuit shots at either the top or bottom of the screen to check, for instance, strobe crosstalk. But the important thing is, how does it work? In all my reviews so far, every pursuit shot I've taken in Frog Pursuit has had a sync track in it somewhere, which I just straight up stole directly from Blurbusters. Really, if you wanted to invent a method to make sure your camera has accurately and cleanly tracked pixel-perfect motion on screen, the Blurbusters sync track is what you'd inevitably derive. Vertically stacking a sequence of lines for each frame allows you to very precisely see how closely you matched your camera's movement with the movement of the pattern on screen. But even though I'm using the Blurbuster Sync Track for my own pursuit shots, the public release of Frog Pursuit didn't have any pursuit track at all, on purpose. I'll leave the Blurbuster Sync Track to Blurbusters. But for Frog Pursuit to be a usable tool for others, I needed some sort of camera alignment indicator. This PCST is what I've come up with. Without using the concept of vertical stacking, which is what you really should be doing here, another possibility is to use a sequence of adjacent blocks being displayed on different frames. Here I've got five white blocks that fire in a 1, 4, 2, 5, 3 sequence. If you set your camera's shutter speed to a speed at least as slow as one-fifth of the current frame rate, the exposure will capture all five blocks being lit, and importantly, if you track at the same speed as the pattern, the five blocks shouldn't have any horizontal overlap. Here's what this looks like in motion on the VG27AQ at 165Hz, without strobing. It's best to start with video instead of photos because, with video, I can show how the sequence track looks when the camera is panned too slow, too fast, and just right. When the camera is moved either too fast or too slow, the blocks that should be adjacent begin to overlap, causing the track to exhibit obvious light and dark bands. But once the tracking speed is just right, those bands disappear, and the track turns to a uniform smear of gray. This is what you want to see in your shots. Without using the concept of vertical alignment, my PCST can never be as accurate as the test UFO track, but it works well enough for most purposes, and it's something that I can actually distribute publicly. Another feature that has been requested, and is really helpful for those of you intending to use Frog Pursuit for reviews, is the ability to use a custom pattern. If you'd like to add your own, Place your images named as user1.png and user2.png into the Windows No Editor, Smooth Frog, Content, User Patterns directory. The names aren't case sensitive, but they do need to be called user1.png and user2.png. 
The only requirement for the images is that they are at least 256 by 256, but otherwise you can put in whatever you want. If you want to scroll an anime lady, you can do that. But instead of anime ladies, another good option is to use in-game screenshots. A Skyrim screenshot actually presents a great test for VA panels. Fort Sunguard at night is a huge challenge for actually any monitor. If you can pan this image without having it turn into a dark gray smear, you're doing good. Or if you have a custom logo or any sort of scientific pattern, perhaps like a semen star, you can throw those in as well. One thing I intend to add, if I can ever find an RTX graphics card at a reasonable price, is DLSS. SmoothFrog already includes FSR, and FSR upscaling works in Frog Pursuit. So with this semen star, you can go into the video menu and drop the rendering resolution down to say 50%, and see how well FSR reconstructs the star while it's stationary or in motion. When, or if, I can get an RTX graphics card, I'll add DLSS which will give you an easy way to compare upscaling technologies on any image you'd like. But that'll come later, and given Ethereum prices, I'm going to say Q3 2022. Okay, that's all I've got on Frog Pursuit for now. The download for Smooth Frog will be available on the website, aperturegrill.com software. Right now the software is very much a beta, so if you find anything wrong with it, or if you have any suggestions to make it better, please let me know. Oh, and for all you Quake players, give the 3D FPS mode a try. I'd love to hear what you think of the movement. Thanks for watching.